So today we are going to be having a little look at the skincare topic. As chemists, we are very interested in the ultraviolet region of light. And this is because this region of light has enough energy to break the bonds between elements or to break chemical bonds. It's the UV light in um, the kind of atmosphere coming from the sun that causes damage to our skin, it causes our skin to tan, um, and it causes our skin to burn as well. Um, and we know that we can use things like sunscreens, which contain compounds which filter out UV lights to try and protect ourselves. Um, sunblock works slightly differently. It contains compounds such as titanium dioxide, which reflect the sun so that your skin is not in any contact with the UV rays. Uh, the main chemistry involved in um, skin care is free radical reactions. So I, we've already learned at National 5 level, maybe before that, that chemical bonds contain two electrons which are shared between two atoms. So in a covalent bond between two atoms, there are always two electrons. Both electrons are highly attracted to the nuclei of the two atoms. So to break the covalent bond, we need high energy um, in order to do this. UV light has enough energy to break a covalent bond with two atoms and it leaves two atoms with um, an unpaired electron each. So for example, if I was to begin with a molecule of chlorine, and remember chlorine is diatomic, if I expose my chlorine to UV light, and sometimes you see this as HV, my chlorine will break into two radicals, which means, imagine there are two electrons in the covalent bond between your chlorines. One of these electrons will move on to one of the chlorines and one of these electrons will move on to the other chlorine. So we end up with two chlorines and each of those chlorines have an electron, just a one unpaired electron attached to it. That one, one unpaired electron and that chlorine with the one unpaired electron is called a free radical. This step in creating free radicals is called the initiation step. The next step in a free radical reaction is called propagation. And propagation is when you start with one radical and that radical um, starts a chain reaction where it creates more radicals from molecules. So the highly reactive chlorine free radicals react with hydrogen molecules producing hydrogen free radicals. Now this is just an example of a chlorine radical reacting with a hydrogen molecule, but this could happen with any um, free radicals. So for example, during our initiation step, we created a chlorine radical. That chlorine radical could react with a molecule of hydrogen. In doing so, the chlorine radical will steal or take an electron from the bond between the two hydrogens, leaving one of the hydrogens as a free radical with an unpaired electron and creating a new bond between the chlorine and the hydrogen. So we will end up with a hydrogen radical and a new hydrogen chloride molecule. In this reaction, we could also have the hydrogen, uh, another possible propagation step rather, is using the hydrogen radical that we have just formed. And that could also react with a molecule of hydrogen, creating a new hydrogen radical and a new molecule of hydrogen. So this, this radical will steal an electron, creating a new bond in between the two hydrogens. But that means that th this hydrogen here will be left with an unpaired electron, turning it into a radical. The third step will be if we started with our hydrogen radical, oh sorry, actually, if we started with our chlorine radical again, 
and that chlorine radical reacted with a molecule of chlorine because we also have molecules of chlorine in the mixture because that is what we started with in the initiation step. That will create a new chlorine radical and a new molecule of chlorine, Cl to Cl. So the propagation step keeps the reaction going. The hydrogen radical formed from one reaction then breaks the Cl to Cl bond, leaving a chlorine radical. Forming a chlorine radical is crucial to the reaction as this radical was responsible for the reaction in the first place. The whole process continues again and again until there are no reactants left or termination occurs. This is why this is, this is called a chain reaction. The final step in our free radical reaction is the termination step. So free radicals can react with other free radicals and at any point in the reaction, two free radicals can collide and form a stable molecule with no unpaired electrons. And once all of your free radicals have combined to form stable molecules, the reaction stops. An example of this is if we take one of our chlorine free radicals that we made in the very beginning in the initiation step, and that reacts with another chlorine free radical, we'll make a stable molecule of chlorine. Another possible termination step is one of your hydrogen free radicals that you made during the propagation step, reacting with one of your chlorine free radicals to form a stable molecule of hydrogen chloride, or one of your hydrogen free radicals reacting with another hydrogen free radical to form a stable molecule of hydrogen. So we already know that alkenes rapidly decolorize bromine water as a double bond breaks to form an addition product with the bromine. If the same reaction is carried out with an alkane in the presence of UV light, the bromine will also decolorize. This time, the reaction is a free radical reaction. So the initiation step in this reaction If we're beginning with bromine and we expose bromine to UV light, then the bromine bond is broken. The covalent bond between the two bromine atoms is broken, and one electron from one electron from the bond goes to one bromine atom, and one electron goes to the other bromine atom, forming two bromine radicals. A propagation step in this reaction. So we are reacting the bromine with an alkene. So for example, methane. Methane has four hydrogens. And when methane reacts with bromine, a bromine radical, a new bond is formed between the bromine radical and one of the hydrogens from the methane. So one electron from the one of the bonds between the carbons and the hydrogens will go into this bond and the other electron from that bond will end up on the carbon creating a new radical. So what we will end up with is our new radical which is our methane which is now missing a hydrogen but as a free radical, it has an unpaired electron, plus a molecule of hydrogen bromide. A second propagation step would be if we started with the new radical that we have just formed, and it reacts with a molecule of methane, and we would form a new methane free radical, plus a new molecule of methane. And the third step would be if we had our bromine free radical and it reacted with a molecule of bromine, we would make a new bromine free radical plus a new molecule of bromine. So there are always three steps in the propagation. Um, reactions. Possible termination steps of this reaction would be if we had one of our methane radicals and it reacted with another molecule 
another methane radical rather. Those two electrons would form a new bond between the two carbons. And we would form a molecule of ethane. If we had a methane radical and a bromine radical reacting together, that would form a stable molecule of bromomethane. And if we had two bromine radicals reacting together, that would form a stable molecule of bromine. So again, there are always three possible termination reactions. Two of the same radicals reacting together and one of each radical reacting together to form three different stable molecules. Many cosmetic products contain things called free radical scavengers. Now we can't just rely on radicals terminating themselves. So we add free radical scavengers to things like face cream. These molecules which can these are molecules which can react with free, ad, uh, free radicals to form stable molecules and prevent chain reactions. So they are causing the termination reactions and thus they are preventing the propagation steps from happening. As UV light can cause wrinkling of the skin, some skincare products claim to contain chemicals which prevent wrinkling. These are claimed to be anti-aging creams. Free radicals remove electrons from the skin uh, cells and damage them and wrinkles start to develop. So if your free radicals are removing electrons from skin cells and that's causing some skin damage, by adding free radical scavengers, the free radical scavengers will mop up the free radicals that are created, preventing the damage from happening. Melatonin and vitamin E are examples of natural free radical scavengers. Adverts for anti-aging products can be examined to identify the scientific basis of the claim. Free radical scavengers are also added to food and to plastics as they will react with radicals to stop um, the spoiling of the food. And there's a diagram of melatonin here as well. So you can see that they are complicated organic molecules, um, but they do mop up free radicals. Uh, in your question booklets, we're going to have a little look at the questions. So you can attempt these questions on your own and then we will go through them individually. Uh, you can pause the video, come back and I'll go through them individually just now. So question 4a, what term describes the type of step in the free radical reaction of carbon monoxide? If we are looking at the reaction above, we have a stable molecule and a free radical reacting together to create another stable molecule and another free radical. So we're starting with a free radical and we're finishing with a free radical. So this is part of the chain reaction and it is a propagation step. B says write a possible termination step for the above reaction. Well, we could have a hydroxyl free radical reacting with another hydroxyl free radical to create a stable molecule of peroxide. We could have our hydroxyl free radical reacting with a hydrogen free radical to create a stable molecule of water or our hydrogen free radical reacting with another hydrogen free radical to create a molecule of hydrogen. So all I did was took the two radicals that they gave me, reacted them both with each other and with themselves to come up with three termination steps. Question five says, in a free radical reaction, iodine radicals are formed via the step below. Write a possible propagation step. So for 5a, So write a possible propagation step for the reaction with methane. So methane has got a carbon with four hydrogens and we're going to show the bond in one of those hydrogens because that is the bond that's going to be reacting with the free radical. That methane molecule could react with an iodine free radical. The iodine would form a new bond between itself and the hydrogen 
and the extra electron from that bond would jump onto the carbon creating a new free radical. So we would end up with a CH3 radical plus a molecule of hydrogen iodide. Another possible propagation step would be if we had our CH3 radical reacting with another methane molecule and that would create a new CH3 radical and a new molecule of methane. And finally, we could have the iodine free radical reacting with a molecule of itself, of iodine, to create a new iodine free radical plus a new molecule of iodine. B says write a possible termination step for this reaction. I think we'll get rid of this first so we've got plenty of space. So in termination, so the, rad the radicals that we had in the mixture were the CH3 radical that we created during propagation. That could react with itself. to create a new molecule of ethane. We could also have our iodine reacting with another iodine radical to create a stable molecule of iodine. And our CH3 free radical reacting with an iodine free radical to create, to create a stable molecule.